Hey everyone, welcome back to Boston Auto Blog. I want to start off by saying a huge thank you to you guys for making this video even possible uh, by asking your questions. And um, I hope to do more of these Q&As in the future. Before I get to the questions, I want to thank you guys for um, submitting your ideas as to what I should name my second channel. And I've come up with the idea that I don't want it to be anything close to Boston Auto Blog or anything that is in this region. Reason being is because um, this weather has really made me think about doing a last minute trip outside of Massachusetts. Now, I can't do that this year, but if winters are going to be like this in the future, I can't film at all. It's 11 degrees out right now. Yesterday was, I think, 6 degrees with minus 14 wind chill. Um, you can get a frostbite within 30 minutes, so there's no way I can do any type of filming. So I'm thinking of having a second channel with the vlogs, of course, and like I said in the last video, and it will allow me to travel. Now, I thought about you know going down to Florida, um, but again, I have a trip coming up in March, so I can't do that. So without wasting any further time, let's get right into these questions. If money is no object, what is your dream car to own? Most likely, this changes pretty much every month because I'm really bad at cars that are extremely expensive. But right now, I think I could see myself if I had about two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars to spend, a McLaren five seventy S. I think they sound amazing. They look really good. You get the Lambo doors, and they're different. A lot of people like buying Lamborghinis. That's the real popular thing right now. But the McLaren is different, and it just seems like a car that would be really, really fun to own. What was your favorite car event for 2017? This year, it was definitely Dream Ride. Um, the trip down was awesome. I wish I actually captured that because there was about 10 to 15 of us driving down. I was in an Acura NSX the entire way. That was really fun. But then to see a Lamborghini Centenario, there are a number of Enzos and LaFerraris. Um, really, really fun. And I really can't wait for next year. Would you ever do a video for the best car spots in 2017 and years further? Um, for this year, I do plan on having something up for New Year's Eve. I don't know if I have time to put it up, though. Um, it would be a tribute video for this year. It was an unbelievable year. I'd like to have something up um, just to, you know, really uh, have it like as a thank you to everybody who's part of the car community. Because this was an incredible year going on the rallies, uh, doing the reviews. Um, going to cars and coffee events. It's just been really, really fun. So um, I would like to have something up for New Year's Eve. If I can't, I'll definitely have it up for next week. For the years further, uh, that will be on the second channel, seeing as though that um, all that type of content will be uh, on the second channel uh, once that um, channel is set up. What are three cars you really want to review in 2018? The Maserati Gran Turismo, mostly because I want to own one. I want to see if I can actually enjoy driving it. So it's one of the cars I want to drive more than do a walk around review of. I want to see if it's actually a car that I could own. Um, I've wanted one for years, and I don't really care what year I review of. I've seen 2009, 2010s at dealerships, and I don't really care if it's 2018. I'll review anything that's a Gran Turismo. I just want to see if it's a car that I could enjoy driving and one that I could see myself owning for a long time. Number two would be the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio and the Alfa Romeo uh, Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Um, I want to see if they're any different than Maserati, especially for interior quality. Now, the uh, Giulia Quadrifoglio is the same price as the Ghibli, and I believe the uh, horsepower and the performance is going to be worth a lot more than if I was to go and buy a Ghibli or if anyone else wants to buy a Ghibli. I think the Giulia Quadrifoglio would be much more uh, fun to own and drive. Number three would most likely be the Aston Martin DB11. That's a car, personally, I believe is the best looking Aston Martin that's been ever made. I Maybe the DB5 is, is definitely up there, but the DB11 is one car that, just in terms of filming uh, and taking photos of, is something that I really want to do. And once the warmer weather comes, I want to at least do a walk around review of that car. What are three cars you really want to see in 2018 that you haven't seen before? Definitely a Koenigsegg. I don't care which one it is. Um, there should be one at um, Boston Auto Show in January, so that should be fun. I'm keeping my fingers crossed on that one. Uh, Bugatti Chiron and a Ferrari F40. At what point did you realize you wanted to film car events? It was December of 2015, and it was actually, ironically, uh, exactly two years ago this day. Um, stateside Supercars, and I remember seeing him at this event, he had filmed all the accelerations from this event, and to me, it goes down as being the best cars and coffee I've ever been to. Um, and 
I wanted to relive those accelerations. I had some of the accelerations on my phone, but I filmed horizontally and the video came out really, really bad. But I looked at his other videos. He, he does a lot of stuff in Europe as well. And I was like, no one does this around here. And it took eventually took a year and a half until I got my first DSLR um, before I could start doing those type of videos. And that's what really influenced me to go do car event videos. Since every car is different, how do you approach reviewing a car? It really comes down to the individual car. So if there is uh, slight changes in the body style, such as the XES that had a different front bumper than the other XE models, I focus on the changes. Um, if there's like even like a different side mirror cap, I focus on the on the changes, and then that goes along with the packages that the car comes with. Um, so if I was to do just a regular car, most likely I wouldn't be focusing on the exterior features. I'd focus more on the interior features. Um, SUVs to me are a lot more difficult to do only because, um, you know, you have to focus on everything such as the lift gate, if it has an automatic lift gate, um, then, you know, even just in terms of filming style, I have to change the height and it takes a lot longer to film SUVs and sedans. What are your thoughts on the new trend of performance SUVs? Personally, I don't like them. Um, I can see the practicality in them. For, you know, car enthusiasts who are who now have families or, you know, have other responsibilities, it does work out. Um, for a, a selfish reason, I could see that being great if I want to do filming. So if you had like a film car, say we're on a rally and, you know, you had a, you know, Macan Turbo or something like that, you can keep up with the exotics and you can get some awesome footage. So you have the practicality in that sense. You can carry all your luggage with you and your camera equipment and that works out really well. What was the first car show you ever went to? Was that what got you into cars? I've always been into cars, but the path that I've been on for the last two years really began at the Boston Auto Show in 2014. Now, I had played Gran Turismo as a kid. I played Need for Speed. And, you know, seeing those cars, I used to race those cars all the time. Um, you know, I remember driving Nissan GTRs, but I never actually saw one. I think that was, that was my biggest um, hindrance there is that, um, you know, I liked cars, but not seeing them in person was kind of um, really difficult because I didn't believe that there was a car scene around here. And then when I went to my first ever car show uh, for Boston Auto Show, I sat in an Audi S5 and I got to, you know, actually experience the car to some degree and I was like, I can't believe this, I'm sitting in an Audi S5. Now, I I mean, years later, now I've been in better cars, but like, that's what really started it. But my first Cars and Coffee event was in 2015 at Herb Chambers, Mercedes-Benz and Linfield. And that's where everything took off. I think I've always wanted to do video and photography for automotive. But that's what really set it off because I got to see the cars in person and to see, you know, I was seeing E92s, uh, seeing Jaguar F-types, I saw a couple Ferraris at the first one. So that's what really changed me. And then um, I guess this is kind of a part two to this question and I guess also answers um, XM Aaron's question uh, for what got me into doing the um, carbon videos was that... Um, I saw, uh, if you know him on YouTube, Peter Beatty's Garage, he had a video um, of him and the crew going up to Maine right after going to Cars and Coffee in Linfield. And when I saw them going all, you know, in like a mini rally, I wanted to do that. I wanted to be, I wanted to film that more than drive actually, which is really crazy. But that's where it all started. That's where I think I went all in on the cars. Uh, it was really when I went to my first auto show and then the first car show. And from there on, um, that's what got me into photography and video. How did you get to the point where you have available car reviews with a lot of dealerships? It really all started out to just do doing one. Um, you know, just having that confidence to go into a dealership, walk right in and say, would it be possible to do this review? And then when the dealership starts seeing the value of your content and your work, uh, they, you know, they started inviting me uh, back to do more. And once the weather starts getting warmer, uh, I'll go back to the dealerships that I've been working on a great relationship with and uh, do even more reviews in the future. So guys, thank you so much again for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. I hope I answered them uh, to the fullest extent. If I don't post another vlog before 2017 is over, I hope you guys have a happy and safe uh, New Year's and 2018 is gonna be even better. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, take care and have a great day.